Welcome everyone back to our channel. Wish you have a very nice day. We hope you enjoy this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel to stay updated with the latest information. Join us on this journey and listen to this video until the very end. Type Amen if you believe, may God always bless you. Over the past two centuries, the Catholic Church has grappled with significant and challenging theological questions. One such question pertains to the timing of the rapture, will it occur before, during, or after a period of tribulation? In recent times, Pope Francis has delivered a message that has reverberated throughout the Catholic faith, sparking both intrigue and concern. In this discussion, we delve into the intricacies of the rapture and the various beliefs associated with it. The three primary rapture beliefs, pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, and post-tribulation, have sparked divisions among church leaders as they interpret Bible verses about Jesus' return and the impending battle of Armageddon. The Vatican, representing a vast global Christian community encompassing Catholics, Evangelicals, and Protestants, has recently reached a significant decision on this matter. This is of great significance because the Book of Revelation promises blessings to those who follow and understand aspects of the Rapture, Tribulation, and Armageddon. The concept of the Rapture is a belief held by certain Christians, notably within American Evangelicalism, envisioning an end-time event where deceased Christian believers will be resurrected along with the living to meet the Lord in the air. Its origins lie in the first epistle to the Thessalonians, using the Greek word harpezo, which means to seize or snatch away. This belief is rooted in dispensational premillennialism, which suggests that certain biblical prophecies are yet to be fulfilled in the future. It's important to note that this doctrine is relatively recent, emerging in the 1830s and is distinct from traditional Christian teachings. The term rapture is frequently used by fundamentalist theologians in the United States. However, in other contexts, rapture can refer to a mystical union with God or the promise of eternal life in heaven. There is a diversity of opinions on when the rapture will occur and whether it constitutes one or two events. Pre-tribulationism is a belief that separates the rapture from Jesus Christ's second coming, proposing that it will take place before a seven-year period of tribulation, culminating in Christ's return and a thousand-year reign. This concept finds its roots in Bible translations analyzed by John Nelson Darby in 1833, and it currently stands as the most popular rapture belief, though it is debated within evangelical circles. Notably, most Christian denominations do not adhere to rapture theology. They offer an alternative interpretation of the gathering described in 1 Thessalonians 4, refraining from the use of the term rapture as a theological concept and avoiding the associated premillennial dispensational views. Instead, they generally understand the rapture as the gathering of the chosen with Christ in heaven, occurring immediately after his second coming, without the idea of an extended tribulation period. The millennium, described as a thousand-year period during which Jesus Christ will rule on earth prior to the final judgment day, is delineated in the book of Revelation, specifically in Revelation 20 verses 1-3. Various interpretations of this period have led to three distinct schools of thought, postmillennialism, amillennialism, and premillennialism, each offering a unique perspective on the timing and nature of the thousand-year reign and the events associated with it. Postmillennialism interprets Revelation 20 metaphorically, viewing the thousand years as a symbol of an indefinite and extended period. This interpretation is based on 2 Peter 3 verse 8, which equates a day to a thousand years and vice versa. According to this viewpoint, the second coming of Jesus, the resurrection, and the final judgment will all occur simultaneously at the culmination of this lengthy symbolic period. However, this interpretation assumes an extended period of peace and universal adherence to Christianity, 
which conflicts with the Bible's portrayal of good and evil coexisting until the end of the age, as explained in Matthew 13 verses 24 to 30 and 36 to 43. Amillennialism, another perspective, regards the thousand years mentioned in Revelation 20 as symbolic rather than literal. It represents Jesus Christ's present rule in heaven and his governance of the earth through the church. This belief, prevalent among Protestants, emphasizes the coexistence of good and evil on earth until the ultimate judgment day, aligning with biblical teachings. Amillennialists argue that the Bible does not explicitly state that Jesus will directly rule on earth during the millennium, emphasizing that the thrones of the saints mentioned in Revelation 20 verse 4 seem to be in heaven. They point to the symbolism in this representation of Christ's rule and maintain that the real transformation occurs when Jesus returns, temporarily binding Satan's influence. The third belief, premillennialism, is predominantly followed by fundamentalist Christians, particularly evangelicals. It shares a common feature with postmillennialism in its expectation of a thousand-year Christian golden age on earth, but it differs in that it anticipates this golden age after Jesus' second coming. According to premillennialism, Jesus will return in two phases, first, in the rapture just before a seven-year tribulation, gathering both the living and the dead righteous individuals. Then, he will return at the end of the tribulation to defeat the Antichrist and establish God's kingdom on earth for a thousand years. Subsequently, the final judgment day will occur. It is crucial to note that this interpretation lacks clear biblical support. Nowhere in the New Testament is there evidence of a golden age between the thousand years and the final judgment day. For instance, Matthew 25 verses 31 to 32 discusses Jesus coming with his angels to reward individuals based on their actions, without mentioning a golden age. In verse 46 of the same chapter, it speaks of eternal punishment and eternal life, rather than a temporary golden age. In the context of the Catholic Church's beliefs regarding the rapture, tribulation, and the millennium, the Church does not employ the term rapture, but it does hold the belief that, at the end of times, a significant gathering of righteous individuals will take place to be with Jesus Christ. The Catholic Church aligns with amillennialism, although it may not explicitly label it as such. Remarkably, Approximately two-thirds of all Christians share this amillennial belief, signifying their view that there is no literal thousand-year golden age on earth between the events of the Bible and the final judgment day. Instead, they adopt a more symbolic interpretation of these events. As for Pope Francis's message concerning the impending rapture, it signifies the Catholic Church's stance emphasizing an amillennial view and symbolic understanding of end-time events. This perspective is distinct from the interpretations of certain other Christian groups and offers a unique perspective on these complex theological matters. Thank you for watching until the end of the video. What are your thoughts on today's topic? Please leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, Click the bell button to receive notifications when there's a new video. May your moments of adoration before Christ's presence be filled with His grace and love. May you find solace and strength in His embrace. Amen.